really great numbers. Thanks everyone for coming. It's so good to have you here. It's seven o'clock on the dot. You're all very prompt. Very grateful to you for that. Um, I'll kick off with just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, very warm welcome to you all. Please be aware that this evening's session is being recorded and we will gladly share the, the recording link with anybody who wants it. And I believe the team at Bondi Chimanli headquarters will be sharing the, the recording as a resource as well. So that is available to you. Um, it's completely up to you whether you leave your cameras on or put yourselves on mute or off mute, but just please bear in mind that that will form part of the recording. Um, I'd ask that you please keep keep yourselves on mute as much as possible, unless you do have a question, just to cut out the background noise. I've got what's going on in the kitchen downstairs. Hopefully you can't hear that. And there will be plenty of time for questions. So please feel to feel free to kind of unmute and ask them at any point in time or put your hand up. Otherwise, we will open the floor for questions at the end of the session. <laughs> it is gonna be hopefully pretty informal and we'd love you all to contribute if you'd like to. Okay, on that note, hi again and thanks. My name is Andrea Doney. I'm coming to you from St. Ives, just north of Sydney. I also have, um, it is my great pleasure to introduce Emma Gray. Emma and I only met a few minutes ago we don't run in similar circles for reasons that will soon become very apparent. Um, but I am very grateful to her for being here and a little bit in awe. Emma was first female finisher at last year's Bondi to Manly Ultra, despite only having started running in COVID. She was also a second female at Stromlo and she did Tarawera 100K. So a pretty impressive CV. On top of being a mum to three young kids, living in rural New South Wales and holding down a part-time job. So really interested to hear what she has to say. And she's gonna to chat to us about her experience of Bondi to Manly Ultra and I'll take over after that. Thanks everyone. And over to you, Emma. Thanks, Andrea. Um, so as Andrea's already said, I'm Emma. Um, I ran Bondi to Manly last year and um, had, a, had a great day. It was a lot of fun. Um, I know Andrea's prepared a far more comprehensive um, presentation for you guys, but I just thought I'd jump on and very quickly give you an overview of um, what, what my training was in the lead up to the race and um, what the course was like and, um, yeah, a bit of gear stuff and, and what I learned from it all. Um, so in terms of training... I live a long way from um, from Sydney, so I actually live in a tiny place called Manjurama, which is in the central west of New South Wales, um, out sort of near Orange. So that meant I didn't get much opportunity to, to train on the course, although I did get to Sydney a couple of times, and probably by the time the race came around, I had covered most of the course at, at some point, um, twinned with the fact that my amazing coach lives in Sydney and so she could sort of try and describe the course a little bit to me um, which was very helpful. Um, Bondi to Manly was the longest run I'd, I'd done at that point so the main focus of my training really was to just try and get up to being able to cover that distance. Um, so I guess a, a normal training week, I would run four or five times a week, probably do one effort session in that, maybe hills or maybe some sort of speed. And then I'd um, do a long run at the weekend. And that built up to my longest run in the lead up was 50 kilometers before um, Bondi to Manly, probably about four weeks out. And then I would tapered from, from there on in. Um, the other things that were really important in training were just practicing everything that that would happen on race day so um trying to get pacing correct which i'm still awful at um 
nutrition, hydration, even just down to, you know, wearing what what gear I was going to run in. So clothes, using the hydration pack, that sort of thing, um, and just making sure that it was all comfortable and I wasn't going to chafe in strange areas that I couldn't predict. You just want to make sure that that happens during training rather than during the race. Um, I'm sure most of you are all aware of, of the course and um, what it's like, but um, it's it's sort of roughly split into four different legs and that's based on where the aid stations are. And also that's the start points for each of the legs of the relay. Um, the first two legs are probably mostly on road. Um, I think the first leg actually has the most elevation, but you don't really notice that because it's, you're on fresh legs and it's all still quite exciting and it's a bit easier because it's on the road um and I saw someone had asked whether it gets boring doing lots of road running but I I didn't find it boring at all I maybe it's because I'm not used to running on roads but um yeah it was it was all good it's all beautiful course and you sort of hop on and off of the the coastal path um fairly frequently so it doesn't it doesn't get boring it's not a sort of long road slog um, and then the second two legs tend to drop onto the trails a bit more, but it, it's not very technical trails. So it's, it's all pretty runnable if, if you want to run. Um, and yeah, it's, um, it really is a, a very beautiful, beautiful course. Um, there are some hills, they're not massive hills that so I wouldn't say they're anything to worry about. There's not a huge amount of sand you, you go onto the beach a few times but the sand sand running didn't really um feature that much and the one thing that I was a bit surprised about was the amount of stairs um you, you do go up a few a few flights of stairs if anyone's done UTA or anything like that it's it's nothing like that the elevation and the amount of stairs are, are minimal in comparison but um just to to note that there are some stairs there are a few little hills, but nothing to be too concerned about, I'd say. Um, Gear-wise, I ran in just shorts and a singlet, and then I, I went for all-terrain shoes rather than road shoes. I think you could very happily run the whole course in road shoes if you wanted to, but I am um, still quite quite hesitant and and not particularly confident on trails or even when the road's a bit wet and slippery so for that reason I um went for all-terrain shoes they were they were great um and then I also obviously had a hydration vest so I carried um a liter and a half of water with me in a bladder and then I had my gels and cliff blocks and then mandatory gear there's a very small amount of mandatory gear that you have to carry so just double check all of that um so I carried a liter and a half of water and refilled that probably at about the halfway point um and then just had another liter and a half for the rest of the run things I learned on the on the day or things that surprised me I guess the the biggest the biggest point was that it it got really hot um, so I looked at the weather in advance and saw it was going to be a max of 22 or something and thought, oh, that's that's nothing. But actually, when you're running in that, um, when the majority of the course is actually quite exposed, there isn't much shade. It was really hot. Um, the main issue I saw people having was that they were cramping. So if you're susceptible to cramps, that's you probably want to be carrying some salt sticks or make sure you've got electrolytes that sort of thing um and in terms of hydration I ended up running out of water so the first 40 kilometers I didn't finish the liter and a half of water that I was carrying but then the second um the second 40 k's I ran out of water and was probably blew up a bit because of that because I, I then didn't want to have any gels because I thought it would make me thirstier um I don't know why I didn't stop and refill my water because there's plenty of bubblers along the course and um, obviously the aid stations as well. But I um, I stopped at the fourth aid station and necked a lot of coke and then um, 
they actually had a fifth aid station as well that they put on I think it was probably about 10 kilometers before the end so that was a good opportunity to to get some more coke and that um that helped um and then sun cream obviously hats I ended up getting burnt even though I was wearing factor 50 but I'm extremely pale so <laughs> that could be why um in terms of the signage on the course it wasn't amazing uh, obviously it's, it's difficult to um have a clearly marked course when it goes through sydney um so i had the course on my watch as well um which which was quite helpful although difficult to follow on such a small screen um there were a few points where i would have gone wrong if i hadn't been running with people that that knew the course better than me. And there was one point where I did go wrong and had to turn back. Um, and I saw uh, quite a lot of people making the same mistake. So I guess whatever you can do to help in that respect, if you have it on your watch or know the course, there are the little um, Bondi to Manly signs along the way as well, which are quite quite good to keep an eye on. Um, yeah, whatever whatever works for you. It's um, maybe they'll, maybe they'll be able to improve that a little bit this year i'm not sure but um obviously it's tricky with it being the city and then i guess the last thing is just enjoy it it's it's a really really fun race and um it's it's quite amazing that you can be in this huge city in um in australia and still often feel that you're miles away from anywhere out in the bush or you, you know looking over these beautiful ocean views and it's we're just really lucky to be able to to be able to run there and um the people are amazing it's it's really nice having you know all the the sydney siders out on the streets having a few drinks and telling you you're mad and that sort of thing and um also everyone else running is amazing runners are good people so have a chat get to know everybody and and just enjoy yourselves it's it's a really fun day so yeah, I think that's about all I've I've got to say. If anyone's got questions, feel free to to shout or ask at the end. And um, yeah, back over to you, Andrea. Amazing, thank you, Emma. You're a hard act to follow. Um, unlike Emma, I am not a talented or fast runner. Um, and I famously was, or infamously, was the last runner across the line at Bondi Canary Ultra. So. Um, literally from first to last. Uh, obviously, my experience is going to be quite different to Emma's and my filter on the race is quite different. But hopefully this will be of interest to those of you who might make up the back of the pack. Um, just because I do get a little bit nervous and I tend to forget what it is I'm doing, I've created, I've just put some slides together to keep me on track. So I'm just going to share this with you. <clears throat> and I hope you can see that. Um, it's probably worth mentioning at the outset that whilst I did the ultra last year, I'm actually not intending to run the ultra again this year. I will be doing, I'll be captaining a team called the Slowshables and I'll be running the relay. So hopefully this works. It's slow. Um, so I have not been a runner all my life, certainly not talented and certainly not much in the way of base fitness in me. I started running in my early 40s, which was about 12 years ago. And over a period of time, I wanted to put some science and some empathy and some support around runners who spend more time on their feet, carry a bit more load and have different sort of nutritional needs. So I do have a level three coaching accreditation through Athletics Australia, and I'm known as the slow coach. Um, in terms of my Bondi to Manly preparation, I had actually previously run the course in 2020 during COVID lockdown, myself and two girlfriends, um, Sally, who's on the call tonight, and one other, we ran the course over two days. So very roughly legs one and two on day one and legs two and three on day two with a really nice uh, stay in a luxury hotel in the middle, which I highly recommend, but sadly the organizers don't permit it. Go figure. 
Um, then on the back of that, in 2021, I ran my first 50K, which was during one of the harsh Sydney lockdowns. So I just ran it on some local streets. That was actually to mark my 50th birthday. And then in 2022, obviously, um, I ran the usual sort of Sydney race season culminating in the Black Moors Marathon, which I think was about, from memory, five or six weeks before um, Bondi to Manly Ultra. And that was pretty much the sum total of my training. I think between Black Moors Marathon and Bondi to Manly Ultra, I did one 30K training run. And yeah. To me, or and certainly to runners like me, whilst I believe physical preparation is is really, really important, and I don't mean to undermine it, I think the success of the day really comes down to mindset and mental prep. And I'll cover that a bit more in a moment. But just here's some happy snaps from the day, um, the official photos and my Strava map. Uh, there's my friend Sally, who's on the call. Hi, love. A video of me coming to ASHT. Hi, love. And similarly, coming into ASHT. So this has got to be roughly at the 60k mark. Absolutely no form. Watch the head slump for the moment. Trying not to die. Ugly crying at the finish line. You can see the emotion on my face there, and literally the sweepers were just a few steps behind me. So 15 hours, 11 minutes was my time, which we... Emma and I figured out was I was exactly double her time. Her finish time was seven hours forty-two. I think mine was fifteen hours eleven. Um, somebody popped some questions in one of the channels in the build-up to this webinar, so I just prepared some answers so I wouldn't forget. Uh, in terms of the route, it's a mixture of road, trail, cobbles, beach, and stairs. As Emma said, uh, road shoes are completely fine. I did legs one and two in road shoes and legs three and four in some hybrid uh, shoes, which were really, really comfortable. Um, the course markings were fine, but not perfect. So that is something to be um, aware of. The organizers have indicated that they're going to be doubling down on their course markings this year. So hopefully it will be a little bit better. Um, Tired runners are the main liability in following the signs. I made a massive mistake and got very, very lost, probably because I was tired and not paying attention. Um, there is plenty of water on the course. There's plenty of shops. There's plenty of bubblers. There's plenty of public bathrooms. So you don't need to worry about access to water. Uh, in terms of your celebration at the finish line, there's heaps of really great hotels in Manly and also fast food outlets upmarket food outlets, pretty much everything you could need is at the finish line. And in terms of um, the numbers, I believe about 1000 ultra runners register approximately and about 500 relayers. So it is a popular course, um, plenty of people out there. Just in terms of myself and how I approached the run last year, knowing that I was gonna be up against the cutoff, I set a few rules for myself. Weirdly, I wasn't allowed to take any photos. It was just a way of pruning those valuable minutes that I would otherwise spend happy snapping. And I didn't check my phone. So whilst it was very comfortable, comforting to hear it binging all day, um, I knew that lots of messages of support were coming through. I could hear the phone beeping, but I didn't look at it. Just something weird that I did. Um, and I, I kind of enforced myself to change my shirt, socks and shoes at the halfway mark. And that really helped. That was a real mental boost. It was a comfort boost as well. Oh, wrong way. The highs for me, the highs were the start line, an amazing start line vibe, a spectacular sunrise, um, great, great camaraderie from the runners, just incredible and on course as well. 
lots of friends out to support me, strangers supporting us, um, my husband at every aid station, and he actually ran the final leg with me as well, which was just phenomenal. I had a really special, almost out of body moment at, uh, I think it was coming out of De Bruyne's head, 40 baskets, somewhere I was going through the national park, obviously being the last runner, not many people around me, the sun was setting. I had this kind of stunning vista overlooking Sydney Harbour with this magical cerulean blue carpet of the sea twinkling below me and you know the, the wildflowers blooming and the birds chirping and I genuinely felt like I had Sydney to myself. I couldn't see or hear another human being and it was absolutely amazing. I have just phenomenal moment um, which will really stay with me. But perhaps even better than that was the incredible crowd support on the route. So obviously the route is open to the public. There's lots of people out and about. And they, they cotton on pretty quickly that what was happening and they started to cheer for us. And there was a moment when I was coming up towards Manly Ferry, I think it was, and all of the beautiful people in Sydney were kind of sprawled across the grass and over picnic tables and enjoying their sundowners and drinks. Um, and as I shuffled past they improvised this massive Mexican wave hundreds of people complete strangers cheering for me um and I felt a bit like Robbie Williams at a rock concert it was just <laughs> phenomenal so I hope you get the same support from the crowd on the day and I, I suspect you will it really was magical but of course with an 80k ultra there were some lows as well and for me, the biggest one was that I got significantly lost. I had lulled myself into a false sense of security and I was following another runner um, coming up. At this point in time, we were coming up through Mossman past the zoo and I stopped paying attention and I just kind of ran straight and clearly I missed a turn somewhere. But it took me several kilometers to figure out that I hadn't seen a marker or another runner and then because, because I was tired, I couldn't problem solve. So I just kept running, uh, just kept going. And yeah, a really significant, I don't actually know, but probably, I don't know, five or more kilometers in the wrong direction until by sheer coincidence, one of the race volunteers drove past and saw me and pointed me back on track. And I could run down to Bradley's head, I think, and pop out there. Obviously, with getting lost, I became very anxious. I became very stressed. Um, my heart rate got very, very high. And it took me a long time to calm down again from that experience. Um, so I don't recommend it. <laughs> Try not to get lost. Um, and the other low for me was the final leg. So going into the last probably 15, 10 to 15 Ks um, up at North Head in Manly, it's a slightly more technical leg um, than pretty much anything else that I had done to that point on the on the route. And in my case, it was dark. So it was about nine o'clock at night. So I was tired, I was emotional, and I was running technical trail in the dark. And I had to rely very, very heavily on my poles, which I chose to run with, and with the support of my husband, who luckily was with me, and the sweepers who were right behind me. But I did find that quite hard. Um, there's a there's a point where you're kind of coming down to Shelley Beach and there's this funny like little hole in the wall that you've got to climb through and luckily I knew the course well enough to go through it but the wind had flipped the signage the wrong way around so the arrow was pointing the wrong way and we kind of collected a whole bunch of runners who were also lost and I tried to duck through this hole in the wall and I pretty much I misjudged the height and I sort of took the top of my head off and yeah it was I felt very sorry for myself it was ugly, but got it done. So in terms of my lessons learned, for me, um, an ultra brain is a tired brain. I could not make decisions and I couldn't make, uh, I couldn't think clearly on the run, certainly not from the sort of 50K mark onwards. So I think it's good practice to make all your decisions before you start running. Decide what you'll do if you get lost. Decide what you'll do if your nutrition strategy doesn't work. Decide what you'll do if things don't go to plan and have that kind of mapped out for yourself. Um, if I were to do it again, I would set myself a rule that if I hadn't seen a course marker for say 
500 meters or so, maybe a kilometer, I would turn back. I wouldn't keep going. And in future, I would have the course map on my phone, on my watch and on my phone. I didn't have the course map on my watch last time, principally because the Garmin I had at the time wasn't sophisticated enough. It didn't have a maps function. I've since invested in a better one because I've realized I need to rely on other tools because I can't trust myself to think. Um, and the other thing I did, remember, as a slower, older, bigger runner, I practiced with and carried poles. During training, the poles really, really bugged me. I hated them. And I was kind of teetering on the edge of not running with them. I am so glad I did because when I was tired and when it was dark, they became like an extra set of limbs and I used them to feel my way uh, downstairs and things like that along the technical trail. Um, and they were a, a great sense of, a source of support. So if you're like me, you might, might want to practice with them and take them with you. But as I've touched on earlier, I think the biggest success of the race is going to come down to mindset. You can only train to a certain point and the rest comes down to your approach to the day. I would really, really encourage you to try and enjoy it and to make some memories. It is the most spectacular, most special, most incredible race. Um, and we are just so lucky to have, you know, the ability to do it. And what worked for me, and I offer it to you as a, as a strategy, is to have a why. I was running on behalf of a family member who is um, really critically ill with a rare form of cancer. And every time the day got tough for me, I would just think about her and realize that no matter how bad my day got, um, the worst version of it would probably still be a day that she would wish for. And that just kept me going. Um, it really helped frame things for me. And, you know, and I knew that as long as I did that left foot, right foot thing, I would get to the finish line. And yeah, forward is a pace. Feel free to screen grab this if it's helpful. Um, I will also obviously share the slides and I'm happy to, I'll share a link to the recording as well. So that's just really what I had in my um, hydration pack and what I had in my drop bags. Um, this is something I wrote in my race summary and I'll just share it with you because I think this is why ultra running is so special, especially for runners like me. The distance wasn't really between Bondi and Manly. The distance was between the version of myself 10 years ago who couldn't run for the phone and the version of me that showed up at the start line. The distance wasn't 80 kilometers. It was the gap between the part of me who wanted to stop and the part of me that was determined to keep going. The finish line wasn't really Manly Beach. It was the magical place where I realized I was capable of finishing. The real battle wasn't in my blistered feet, but it was a quiet war fought above my shoulders. And if a book loving, Coke bottle glasses wearing, musical theater nerd with a penchant for renovation shows and Harry Potter can trans transform herself into an ultra marathon runner, what else is she capable of? What are we all capable of? That's really why we run. The answer is in the journey. So that's me. If I can help you at all, please reach out at any time. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram as The Slow Coach, and that's my website. And I have put together a completely unofficial set of resources that you're welcome to access on my website, uh, runwithslowcoach.com, and then just follow the free or free resources and race tips. So I found a couple of other people's um, YouTube videos and a really excellent podcast. Um, and I should share my packing lists and things like that. Okay, stop sharing. So that's me. Please feel free to ask us questions. And I would also really be interested in hearing from anybody else on the call who might have done this race already. I can see Shay is here and I know he's done it. Um, would anyone else like to tell us about Bondi to Manly and what we can expect? I haven't run it, but um, I ran with Lexi, my coach, uh, last year. I'll turn my video on if you want to see me. Um, I ran with Lexi, my coach, last year for most of, I think, it's the leg before Colantar, 
like three, is that? Um, and the one thing she's taught me as a trail runner and for this was utilize the shops along the way, um, icy poles and um, uh, like smoothies or chocolate milkshakes, um, as crazy as it sounds, do it. Um, I was running, we were running up the hill um kind of in Mossman I think and there was a lady who was quite unwell uh on on the stairs sort of going up that area and I'd happened to grab three icy poles um because I wasn't sure which flavor Lexi wanted and I didn't want to disappoint her <laughs> um and so I managed I grabbed three and as I was going up this lady was very unwell um and I just kind of went do you want an icy pole? And gave her one and kept going. And she later referred to me in a um, thing as the, the icy pole angel or something like that. But yeah, make use of, of those shops and stuff is what I plan to be doing too. So That's a great tip. Thanks, Laura. And I'm sorry that Lexi isn't on the call. She said she was going to try, but it might have, something must have come up for her. If you want to scroll up through the Bondi to Manly, we're all in this together Facebook group. Somewhere in there, Lexi has posted this incredible list of where to buy all the good food on the yep. and where to get all the good icy poles and where to get the best milkshakes. And she knows the course like the back of her hand. I'll try and find it and repost it as well. That's, I guess, the beauty of a race like this as opposed to, say, UTA is you pretty much got access to everything. If you want to stop for coffee, if you want to stop for a three-course breakfast, you can. Um, I'm also interested, I have a question about like hybrid shoes. I was just wondering what, like what were the hybrid shoes you and a Emma and Andrea wore on the day? Um, I don't know. I've just got the shoes Lexi told me to buy. So I'm interested to know what you've got. Uh, legs one and two, I think I ran in Brooks Ghost. I can't remember. And then legs three and four, I ran in New Balance Vibram, I think it is. Uh, like a hybrid trail road shoe, very, very cushioned, very comfortable. What about you, Emma? Um, so I ran the whole thing in Hocker Tectons. Okay. Um, I'm yeah. a Hocker wearer, so that's good to know. Yeah, again, comfortable, cushioned, all good. <laughs> cool. Any other questions? Um, yeah, uh, I have a question just about in terms of because uh, there's lots of tourists around. Did you find it crowded at times? No, I no. didn't. I, I'd be interested to hear from Emma about this because I think, I think if you are fast or competitive, you might find the crowds are an issue. You do have to navigate them. You do have to sidestep. Sometimes you even need to sort of step off the path. But obviously, you know, for me, that was almost part of the fun. Um, it didn't bother me at all, but you've got to bear in mind that it's very busy. Uh, there's lots of kids, you know, everybody is using, the, is using the course that day. It's not like we have it to ourselves. Um, so it's definitely something to factor in. What did you think, Emma? Um, I also didn't really mind the crowds too much. The one time I found it um, maybe a little bit frustrating was... I think it was as we were approaching the opera house um, and I got stuck behind some some very slow moving people going up a flight of stairs and I couldn't overtake them and it, it was it was quite frustrating at the time. Um, otherwise, I didn't I didn't really have any issues coming into Manly was was pretty busy and crowded, um, but you could quite easily sort of dodge around people and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah. It was, it's, it's quite nice having, having everyone out there, having all the crowds out there because they are um, very supportive as well. So, yeah, not too much of an issue. Any other questions? Shay, if you're there, I'd love you to um, pop on and tell us about your run. I've heard um, now from more than one person about these stairs, <laughs> these infamous stairs. When you're saying there's more than you expected, you know, I, I haven't run, obviously, most of those places. So is there any point in training some stairs? How many are we actually talking? <laughs> Thanks. 
Um, well, yes, there's, it's, it's nothing like UTA. If you've done UTA, it's not a patch on that. But there are a fair bit, especially I think it's leg three uh, coming up out of Clontarf, I think was probably the most stairs. And I'm, I, I didn't count. Um, I, I genuinely didn't count, but I'm, I guess, I don't know, 100, 150. Not too sure. And yes, to answer your question, it's definitely worth um, training stairs. So if you wanted to build them into your um, training plan, I'd say maybe do a stairs session a week between now and then or once a fortnight at least. Do a decent warm up and then do 10 to 20 minutes of stair reps. You know, power up, easy down. It's definitely going to help, especially bearing in mind that they quite a few of them are in the second half of the race. So it's it's good to have that strength in your legs. But um, there's, pot, there's lots of way, there's lots of places to step off the stairs and have a rest. There's, most of them have got railings. You can kind of pull yourself up. I did sit down, actually. I think I sat down on the stairs at some point and just recovered. So that is an option. Um, Emma, can you remember more about the stairs? I can't really, I'm afraid. Um, for I didn't train on stairs. Um, so for a race like UTA, I would go out and specifically do stair training and, and be powering up and down stairs, but I didn't do that for this one. And so I wouldn't be too concerned if you, if you don't have stairs available that you can train on. Um, they're not huge, huge flights of stairs. They're, um, they'll they'll hurt your legs a bit but nothing nothing too awful so don't, i wouldn't i wouldn't concern yourself too much about them natasha i can see you've got your hand up hi um i just wanted to add um i'm a sydney cider and i trained on the course quite a lot for the race um i did the relay so i had a different experience to what um Emma and Andrea have said so far um, and within our team we changed positions on who was going to do which leg quite a bit so I just trained for the whole thing um, and I can safely say there's stairs in all four sections of the course um, some are bush stairs which are uneven and you know different heights but then there's other um, you know man-made staircases particularly like two around Kirribilli there's a lot of stairs so I think just yeah like the ladies have said incorporating that into your training is going to make you a stronger runner regardless uh, of which leg you end up doing or if you do the whole thing. Um, and then, yeah, from my experience, I got to do leg four um, of the relay and I ran with runners high for the whole thing. I, yeah, was getting high fives from people who were on the sidelines watching us all run. Um, I got to bring the team home and they were all at the finish line. Um, for me, it was an amazing experience and a great run. It was great to do as a team. It's a unique experience that you don't get to do in Sydney races is, you know, all be part of something together. Um, so the relay is a really great option for anybody to try to get a taste for it. Um, unfortunately, again, I'm doing the relay because uh, I've got Chicago Marathon just before this race, but um, yeah, uh, I just can say that the relay is just a great option for people to try. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it will be nice to see the race and not be quite so <laughs> at it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. I'm I'm toying up with whether to have another go at the ultra next year, but I first want to see what the what the relay is like. Thanks very much for your comments about the stairs. I've actually forgotten about the stairs of Kirribilli, and you're right, there were quite a lot. I think it's Marathon Place, ironically. There were quite a lot of stairs there as well. Um, I'm just interested to know if people are tracking the change in um, cutoff times um because i didn't realize um that there was going to be a change until a friend told me recently so it's now uh everyone has to finish before 8 p.m 
Um, so that means a finish time of 14 to 14 and a half hours at roughly 10 minutes, 52 minutes per kilometre. Um, I've heard that they're, they've taken out um, headlamp, head torches aren't part of the mandatory gear anymore because their aim is to not have anyone do that horrible section in the dark, Andrea. <laughs> Well, I think that's probably wise. I actually didn't have that on my radar. Thank you, Laura, which you know, that would probably preclude a runner like me from doing it. But um, maybe not a bad thing. I, I really did struggle with that last leg in the dark. It was too technical <laughs> for my skills at that point, you know, in the race. Um, it would have been fine has, were I only doing the 20K, but having done the 60 prior to the 20 was basically my legs were cooked so that's really interesting and thanks for flagging that didn't have it on my radar no worries I, I actually wondered like maybe they should reverse it like the comrades does they should have up runs and down runs and every second year they should go manly to Bondi but anyway that's just my thought I haven't discussed that with anybody <laughs> I'm sure it's not going to happen Any, anybody else? Any questions? Anyone else here done it? Hey, Andrea. Hey, Shay. Oh, there you Shay, are. Hi. Yeah, I was having problems on muting. No, I'd, I'd like to echo the things you said and all of them I said. Uh, the heat can get you if it's a lovely if it's a lovely day. Uh, it does get you. Calm can set in, um, and it's definitely not very sheltered. Um, mindset as well. Um, that's a big thing because because it it's a urban ultra. At any point in time, you can really hop on some public transport and go home. <laughs> so you could say, "Oh, I give up. I've had enough of this," uh, and just go home. Uh, get on a bus, get on a train. It's it's really easy just to just quit. So mindset plays a big thing, but it, it's a wonderful event. You learn a lot about yourself if you grind it out and just chatting to fellow runners who are struggling as well. Uh, I took polls like you and they um, really came to the fore when cramp setting and when you're trying to get up, down the hills <laughs> and up the hills and there are a lot, uh, a lot of stairs as you've all covered, um, they do help there. So it's an extra thing to carry, but if I guess if you're middle of the park, back of the park runner, it's fine, right? Uh, if you're right, really going for it and want, want to finish up um, at the top, uh, you know, with a good time, maybe it's, it's something you don't need to carry. Um, but yes, it's a brilliant event. Is um, sort of how I summarise it. Yeah, thanks. It is absolutely brilliant. Um, I can see Elle just joined us. Hi, Elle. Thank you for coming. Hello. Hello. We're just talking about how wonderful the event is. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I thought I'd jump in and see how it was going. I was trying to be subtle. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Andrea, you've got a question in the chat from Jen. Oh, I beg your pardon. Have a look. Hi, Andrea. I'm interested in your foot care, foot prep, and how your piggies pulled up. Great question. Thanks, Jen. Um, actually, my feet were pretty fine. I'm lucky in that I don't generally struggle too much with blisters or anything but I did do some um, some preparation in terms of making sure they were covered with body glide before I put my socks on I think I had an extra band-aid around the sort of hot spots on my big toes memory and while I didn't do it on this race on, I didn't do it on Bondi to Manly I have done it in other races where I wear two pairs of socks just for me I find that helps my feet to move a bit more comfortably in the shoe without rubbing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was fine. I, I sat down at the aid stations. I changed socks, I think two or three times. And I, as I've said, I changed shoes as well. So that really helped putting on dry, clean socks. It's great blister care, but it's also just a great mental boost, emotional boost. Um, so I would recommend that if you think it would work for you as well. What did you do, Emma? I didn't do anything special. 
um, I made sure that I had um, some band-aids with me in case I needed them, um, but I didn't, I like I had a blister at the end of it, but that I think that's probably just part and parcel of running that distance. Um, I don't think my f feet got wet. I can't, I can't even remember now, but um, yeah, the, there aren't really any water crossings or anything, I, I, as I recall. So um, yeah, kept dry feet, had stuff with me in case I needed it. And um, yeah, just hoped for the best. The one thing I did do, which is unrelated to feet, but I um, often chafe where I'm carrying my vest. So I just made sure that I'd taped all those areas before um beforehand and that was really good because um that can that can be pretty nasty if you're running along with things rubbing so um yeah that's that's the only tip I have in terms of sort of taping and chafing and blister protection that sort of thing yeah I I also didn't get my feet wet but I it could have happened I think it was 40 baskets the tide was coming in so the beach was pretty much covered with water but there are big boulders that I was able to step across so I didn't get my feet wet but had I sort of stepped either side of the boulders they might have um, and yeah having an option of putting on dry socks you know it's going to help. Sorry I have another question um, when you talk about having bags at the um at the aid stations or the checkpoints or whatever did you organize this like did your husband go and put them there or like or do they do that as part of the like organization yeah, they do that and it's brilliant so there's a mandatory um briefing the day before which you can attend in person or online so i attended in person and that's where i dropped off my bags i don't know how you would do it if you were there I think you maybe you can do it at the start line. I'm not sure. Mel can possibly tell us. You can do it. Sorry, Andrew. You can do it a bit pick up when you go to pick up your bib. If you don't get it posted, you can actually drop off. That's how I did it. Yeah. Okay. So cool. I just had those sort of insulated Woolies bags with, you know, a piece of packing tape across the top with my name and my bib number and which aid station you want it to be left at. And then it's there when you arrive. And the, the volunteers are amazing. They see you coming and they, in my case anyway, they had the bag ready. They kind of held it up to me as I ran past. So it's brilliant. Awesome. Cool. I can jump in and answer that if you want to, if you, if you, if that's okay, Andrea. Sorry. Um, we are actually moving the, um, the pre-race briefing, sorry, to the Wednesday night. So it's going to be online just because uh, a, a few people struggled with it being on the night before. If they missed it, then they missed a bunch of really important information. Um, so it'll be on Wednesday, which means bag drop will be the Friday at Bondi um, or on the morning of the event. You can drop any time from 4 till 6 a.m. Um, and it will be at the 40K checkpoint uh, this year and exactly as Andrea said it'll all be lined up um, I think it's by surname or by race number or something like that um, I can't remember but it was really well organized last year and everyone was yelling out numbers it was it was it's, it's really useful <laughs> really good awesome thank you guys thanks any more questions Um, is it easy enough for your support to get to all the checkpoints? Do you, or is it better to use the bag drops? But my yeah. husband will be there, so that's why I'm just asking. Thanks. That's a great question, Sandy. It is possible, but it, it requires a bit of planning. I would encourage you to think it through just in terms of the race is really busy and obviously everyone is trying to do more or less the same thing and parking is not easy. So you really need to plan it um, and have how, you know your your sort of how you're getting there and how you're getting out ready long in advance. You you can access a lot of the course by public transport, not all of it, but so if you can come and go by ferry or something like that, I would recommend it. Just because parking is really really difficult, but it, having said that, it's completely doable. My husband met me at checkpoint three and four I think um 
you know, and he just made sure he was there with plenty of time, exercising plenty of patience. Um, and if you can do it, I would recommend it. it. It really helped me knowing that he was going to be there. It just gave me something to look forward to. I had, I really need the emotional sort of support on the run. So um, it's a great thing to do if you can. What did you do, Emma? Um, so I had my husband and kids all there. Um, and if if my lot can navigate their way around Sydney, then I, I reckon everyone else will be fine with country country folk and um <laughs> yeah harry harry managed to get around the course with with the kids um fairly easily i think he drove most of the time and and managed to find parking um but i just saw him at the halfway point pretty much and then again at the end and then i had a few um friends who were out and about on the course not necessarily at aid stations but um yeah it was nice to to see them and they could even hop on, hop on and run a little bit and that sort of thing. So it was, it was nice. Yeah. Have people along the way. There is actually a great race app as well. So your support crew can track you. They can see where you are on the course. So that's really helpful as well. And, and even just having people at home or my family is predominantly overseas. They were able to track me too. So that's just a nice little extra. <laughs> excuse me Emma I, I thought I'd ask you how did you go in terms of your recovery how did you feel at the finish line and how did you feel the couple of days following the race I felt great at the finish line <laughs> um I actually my my body was really good after um afterwards I recovered pretty well the I was actually sort of mentally I struggled a bit after the race because it had been this big thing that I'd been building up to for such a long time and then afterwards I was strictly no no running for a week and a half my coach said and I sort of just felt a bit lost and um also just back to reality <laughs> you know I drove drove home on the Sunday straight to a seven-year-old's birthday party um so it was a bit a bit a bit depressing <laughs> but I very quickly signed up to another race and so uh had something else to focus on and um get back into but yeah my body was um was pretty good afterwards felt felt not too bad a few blisters but that was it really <laughs> okay <clears throat> well we've been speaking for nearly an hour um if you do have any Last minute questions or comments, feel free to speak up. Otherwise, I will just thank you all very, very sincerely for, for coming and for your time and for your attention. Um, if you do need, if I can help in any way, I will. Obviously, with my lens very much being for slower and back of the packers, but please feel free to reach out if there's anything I can do. And um, I do recommend that. Um, on Dr. Manley, we're all in this together group because that's a really great resource as well. I just want to say thank you so much, Andrea, and thank you so much to Emma. Um, uh, Andrea, your story is inspiring and you know I already love you. And you're like, I got teary reading, like when you were reading some of those things, like about the journey and the distance. And like, I've honestly been feeling a bit... Um, uh, I've got sore legs and sore calves and sore shins at the moment. And I said to my husband tonight, I really need to jump onto this webinar because I'm feeling a bit shit about the race. Um, and I just want to cry now because I'm like, I'm excited again. So thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And Laura, you, you've got this for sure. <laughs> thank you. I think that's the joy and the blessing, if I can use that word of ultra running is that it's a platform on which we can prove to ourselves that we're capable and it's also an exercise in showing what ordinary bodies can do. It really is just a day-long picnic, um, left foot, right foot, keep going, always forward. Yeah, all that matters is there's a start line and a finish line and you cross both of them. Everything in the middle is just a bonus. And it's spectacular. I don't think I've ever run... A course that's just so beautiful. 
totally agree. Okay, on that note, I wish you all a very, very good night. Special thanks to Emma for her time and her expertise. It's a real privilege to be able to chat to you. And also to Elle for putting on such an amazing race. We are so lucky to have you. Thank you for, all, for everything and thanks for everyone. Um, Laura, I hope you can see the message in the chat. Karen says you can do it, Laura. I feel the same. This chat has inspired me again. See you all soon. Thanks. Thanks so much, Karen. I got it. Thank you. Love you all. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs>